first of all, I just want to tell everybody that uh, I was out front, I was walking around, I was looking at your posters and everything, and I'm a sports junkie, so I love your, your posters that you have out there about attitude, cooperation, teamwork, etc. All of you are coaches, and you're only as good as the team that you have when it comes to safety, et cetera. Uh, we're going to talk about back safety. This is very informal, et cetera. At your locations, how much weight does your staff have to lift when they're at work? What would be the like an average for yeah. the heaviest thing we yeah. have to lift? The bibs? Bibs of pop? Yeah. Bibs of pop, so 45 pounds? 50 pounds. 45, 50 pounds? Yeah. Okay. 45, 50 pounds, right? Awkward 45, 50 pounds. What did you say? Awkward 45, 50 pounds. An awkward 45, 50. Yeah. Why is it awkward? Because it's hard. There's no handles. It's hard to pick up. Liquid. It's liquid. Over here? Yes. Oh, right here? Oh, okay. <laughs> no way. Sorry, Mark. We're making you dance around. You'll okay. edit this dance. <laughs> So 45, 50 pounds, right? Okay, don't sit down, I need a volunteer. <laughs> can you stand up? What's your name? Bob. Bob, can you do me a favor? How much is in this way? Pound. A pound, can you do me a favor? Simon says, put your hands out straight like that. How much am I gonna have to lift, and I'm being serious, just that pound? Yep, Okay. straight like this. You said awkward position. How long can she lift that without bending her elbows? <laughs> Come and take my place. Not very long, right? Yeah. Five minutes? Not even five minutes, probably, right? So, okay. thank, thank you for volunteering. Yeah. Just remember, the amount of weight that you're lifting, if you're in an awkward position, it doesn't take a lot of weight to feel uncomfortable, right? So we, we all have to remember that. Have we had any past workers' comp claims related to lifting? I'm sure the company has. Company <laughs> has, probably. Not too many, though. Wow, that's, that's awesome. What we have. Okay, do we have equipment to help us lift? No, each other. We got our Thank dolly. you. Thank you. Two little cards. Two wheel carts, you have dollies, right? When it comes to back safety, one thing we need to do a better job is if somebody doesn't feel comfortable, they need to ask for help. Somebody might be able to lift something, no problem, and the next person might need some help. So, so when you do any training, just make sure ask for help periodically if you need it. Um, okay, some of your location, we have storage racks, right? Storage. Just remember, common sense tells us we want the light items up above and the medium items or heavier items about waist high. So when you lift something, you need to pull it off the rack just like this. The last thing you want to do, this is your safe zone when it comes to lifting your shoulders to your waist. Once Mark has to go above his shoulders, that's an awkward position, or if I have to bend over, that's an awkward position. So when you pick something up off a rack, keep it in your safe zone, if at all possible. Okay, <clears throat> what about this? Can anybody do me a favor, stand up for a second? Can everybody just stretch for 30 seconds? Thank you. <laughs> okay, everybody can sit down. Has has your company ever thought about implementing a pre warm up program? I don't think. I mean, beyond our fitness, like those that really, there's a few of them that work out in the morning, but we don't like promote before you sit down at your desk. 
Okay. Or while you're at your desk, you know, you see some of that. I don't think we yeah. do, do we, Sue? No. Or for our yeah, drivers maybe. before you get in that truck or, yeah, yeah when, once you get out three times a day, stretch your back out. Mm -hmm. Do we all work with people when they get to work? They're usually, they might be running late. They walk in with a soda and a Snickers bar to get a sugar high because they just woke up, right? <laughs> we all work with people drink. like that. Or an energy drink, that's, that's a new thing too. What we might want to do is say, wait a minute, let's, let's, let's do a little pre-warm-up. In the first three to five minutes when somebody gets to work, usually they're sitting around talking to somebody. So, so you might want a, some type of stretching program. I was telling Sue when I went in the other room, I referee high school basketball, varsity basketball games. My brain says, hey, Slick, in about an hour, you're going to be refereeing and you're going to be running with 16, 17, 18 year old kids that can run a lot faster than you can. It takes me half hour to 45 minutes to get dressed and then I start warming up. And if I don't warm up, bad things happen to Mark's body. <laughs> So that's why, that's why I always have to, have to warm up. So we're going to go through this. Let me know if there's any questions, comments. We're going to talk about common causes of the back. We're going to talk about lifting, and the anatomy, et cetera. Before I forget, has anybody ever had back surgery in here or known somebody with back surgery? Before my mother passed away, she had six or seven of them. Oh. I want to talk about being proactive so we don't have back surgeries. Because most of the time when somebody has back surgery, they're dealing with that pain or they can be for the rest of their life. Okay. So Workers do you have an opinion on that with like a chiropractor stretching you out? Uh, I'm not big on chiropractors, but how many people in this room have ever slipped and fell? Okay. I have. I did this year over Christmas and winter break, and I slipped and fell, and I was checking the stars out. And as soon as I fell, I go, oh, this is going to hurt. And I went to my chiropractor, and boom, he popped me, and he said, I'll see you in six months to a year. So. It's big for um, arthritis prevention in yep. all your joints, back, spine, everything. Excuse me. Uh, about six years ago, I volunteered, I got a new hip. Uh, I wore the other one out, so I had to get a new hip. <laughs> so if you look at that, 80% of us are going to have some type of back problem in our lifetime. And most of the time, it's only going to be a pulled muscle or a strain or something like that. Healthcare costs are skyrocketing. They keep going up and up all the time. That's why we want to talk about prevention of back injuries, how we can reduce back injuries. Okay, in this room right now, do we have poor posture? Somewhat, right? If that person in that chair right there, if that person was sitting in a recliner, how many people in this room fall asleep like that at night? <laughs> if, that, if that guy had a remote control, <laughs> Right? Or if that person was maybe on a couch instead of a chair, right? That happens. That happens a lot. So common cause of the back pain. If you look at it, faulty body mechanics, poor posture, okay? I'm, I'm one of the oldest ones in this room. Loss of strength and flexibility. It's, it's just an aging process that happens to a lot of people. <coughs> How about this one? General decline of physical fitness. Are we as active as we were five years ago? No. Some of us are. Okay, how many people last night slept eight hours? Wow, one person in this room. Okay, how about the last two nights? Have you got eight hours? No, how many people slept on sleep on a good mattress when you go to sleep? Try to. Other common causes of back pain. 
Poor nutrition. How many people try to eat three nutritious meals a day? Okay, before I forget about nutrition, I was sitting in the back of the room, that last talk that you had up here, I was very impressed. Very, very impressed. Was that your son? Yes, that was my son. Very impressive. But, and Vanessa works for us for, she's been with us quite a while, and she and JJ now team our wellness program. Thank you. I told Sue that I went through that a program like that uh, six years ago, and I lost over 35 pounds, and I've kept it off. And I referee high school basketball. My last game that year was in March. The next year, my first game was at the same school. <coughs> I, took my, I took my jacket off, and it was a stand room only game. I took my jacket off, and the horn was buzzing. I, got, I thought, what the heck is going on? And my friends said, come here. And they said, we don't know how to ask you this, but are you OK? And I said, what do you mean, OK? And they said, you don't look the same as you did five months difference. And I just started eating right, and I, I walked and stuff like that. So it does work. Common cause of back pain, lack of rest and smoking, that can lead to back problems sometimes. OK, is that person lifting correctly? No. No. Nope. Uh, this lady right here, we were talking before you came in, and you said, back, she said, why are you here? And I told her, and you said, Back safety 101, right? Yep. It's just common sense stuff, and we've, we've all told people about this. In the last year, when you're at your locations, have you ever told anybody, whoa, 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 wait a minute, you need to do this differently? You have? Yes. When it comes to back safety, you, you might want to tell somebody to slow down a little bit. Any safety. <coughs> okay, uncommon causes of back pain. The third one there, we're right in the middle of cold and flu season. Where I live at in Davenport, it, it's, it's crazy the amount of people in hospitals now. If you have a bad cold and flu, your whole body's going to ache, right? It's just, just part of it. The first one, I, I skipped that one, birth defects. Some people are born with the curvature of the spine. They don't find out until later. Before I forget, I am going to email this PowerPoint to Sue so you can use it with your staff. Just a reminder, if you've ever had anybody that has a, a back problem and you notice them lifting wrong, I would suggest you put them through this PowerPoint <coughs> again, just a reminder. Okay, lifting. We do not want to be a weightlifter at work. We want to ask for help. Have you ever seen people wear, wearing safety belts before? Okay, ocean safety people did a study. They don't help you, they don't harm you. A lot of times people wear those because they think they can lift more, and they can't. All it is is a reminder to stay within your, your, your limits when it comes to back safety. OK, is the first person lifting correctly? No. no. First person looks like you might be struggling, right? Mm -hmm. How about the second person? Is that person lifting correctly? Yes. And it looks like he's struggling too. Look where the box is at, right? How about the third person? The third person has it in the safety zone, right? What I should do is have another picture in front of all those three about, did we look inside the box to see what's in the box or did we look at how much the box weighs? And in a lot of cases in your guys' store, it says right on the box. And that's them preventing their liability. So I think if we just slow down, someone mentioned that maybe even this morning at our meeting, Val, I think. Slow down and teach your team how to read that box. I think that would help as well. Yeah. Who's been here the longest? Should we see 
been JJ all his life. <laughs> so, how long you been here? Um, like over 35 years. Okay. Can you remember when you first started? Can you remember when you purchased things? Things were more than 50 pounds. When I first started doing safety about 36 years ago, it was not uncommon to see 100 pound bags of stuff. And what did you just say is that, that people are, are reducing the amount of their containers and packaging to make it easier for people to lift. The worst I ever saw, I saw something one time that weighed 200 pounds. It's like there's no way one guy can lift 200 pounds by themselves on a regular basis. A lot of things also say team lift. Yep. So if something says team lift, please don't try and manhandle that. <laughs> also, on a, on a team lift, you have to remember, Jill, right? Yep. If we're doing a team lift, I have to communicate to Jill, hey, Jill, on a count of three, one, two, three, we're going to pick it up, and we're going this direction with it. And then before we set it down, I need to tell Jill, on one, two, three, we're going to set it down. So we need to communicate back and forth every time you lift something. Okay, if you have a job, whatever job you're trying to set up, try to avoid picking something up and twisting at the same time. If this is my job, I should be picking something up and pivoting and putting it on a table. When you pick something up and twist and turn, you're in an awkward position and you can slip and fall. Another reason to know why you're, what shoes your team is wearing. So, do you have a, shoes are a big deal. Do you have a shoe program? We have a shoe program. I don't think it gets used a lot on shoes for crews. It used to be our shoe program, but I think wow. it got a little bit expensive, so I know Payless and Walmart both have safety shoe options, and they're marked. So, you know, we do have a regular policy that you got to have safety shoes and okay. can't wear this, can't wear that. But uh, so many people, you know, they got it, but the floor is greasy or it's wet or whatever, and then that shoe slipping is what causes the front of the problem. If you have an employee that complains about, oh, my back is sore, or somebody in this room, look at your shoes. Are you wearing good shoes or boots? if you're gonna be on your feet eight hours a day. Another thing is, wet floors. Are you keeping track of your wet floors to make sure they're cleaned up right away? Just a reminder. Okay, your spine. Every time I see this picture, I think of Superman. Christopher Reeve, right? Can anybody tell me what happened when he got hurt? Horseback riding accident. Okay. Yep. How high was he? Just the normal, what? Six feet, right? He was on a horse, he was jumping, wasn't he? Yeah. Okay. This leads to my next question. Do you have ladders in your stores? Yes. Yes, How high are your ladders? Six feet. Really? <laughs> So Christopher Reeve was up six feet, and you have six-foot ladders. <coughs> Just remember, if we're not using the ladder the right way, what could happen? And Jill said about shoes for crews. Just make sure that when you're going to use the ladder, I'm, all, I'm only the messenger on this, I bet you have step ladders, right? According to safety and OSHA people, We've all done this before. If you use a step ladder, the step ladder has to be open. Some of us, maybe at home, have taken a ladder and just leaned it against something. Well, they can kind of slip out sometimes. So we need to make sure that, that we open it up and use it the correct way. Okay, anatomy on the back. Slip disc, some people develop a uh, slip disc. It's supposed to be very painful. Sometimes, Jill said, you can go to a chiropractor and they can work with you on this. Here's the painful one right there. A herniated disc, and usually a herniated disc, if you, if you talk to somebody, usually it's kind of weird. 
the pain usually starts in their legs and it goes up. And my understanding is it is supposed to be extremely painful. I've never had that before, but it's supposed to be very painful. Right? Okay, stretching. I'm a firm believer in stretching and something that you might want to think about. I have a co uh, number of companies that do it. They do it first thing in the morning and they do it right after lunch and they do it for like three minutes to four minutes and they do it a as, as a, a group. They do it together and a number of them actually sign off that you actually did it. The other thing is, that last comment, if you stretch and you feel pain, you're doing it the wrong way. And that's something that's changed. When I was a kid, I played sports and our coaches used to tell us, you got to feel pain. No, you don't. If you feel pain, you're doing it the wrong way. A couple things here is, and then we're finishing up. Keep your, keep your feet positioned the right way. Okay, clear path. Some of you are coming to work early in the morning and some of you might be staying late. Is this time of year we have black ice out there, right? So just remember, you should be walk, walking like a penguin when you come into work and then Walk like a penguin on the way out. Does everybody know how to do that? We can stand up and practice. <laughs> I will email you something. <laughs> Come on, you guys, stand up. I will. <laughs> I'm serious. Come on, stand up. Stand up once. <laughs> Give me your best penguin walk. You are someone. Show me your best penguin walk. So, <laughs> walk slowly. Yeah. You don't Run. have to worry about it? Run. 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 And you're outside your comfort zone, that's where you want to be when the conditions are different than normal conditions. So your mind, making your body do something outside of its comfort zone. Does that make sense? So you feel that? Look at you. Some won't get up and do it. Some, you know, it's like you, you got to feel it to embrace it. All right, that's it. Thanks. So I'm going to email you something that last week St. Ambrose University sent it out to all their staff. What do you think the picture is? We had slippery conditions in Davenport. They sent it out to everybody on campus got an email. A bunch of what walking around. <laughs> everybody on campus got it. And I said, that's awesome. And Nurse Nancy sent it out. And it was, hey, watch the sidewalks today. Watch the sidewalks, because we don't want anybody slipping or falling. Couple other things, wear comfortable boots and shoes. And look at your staff to make sure they're wearing the right shoes and boots. Beware of uh, surfaces in the wintertime, wet floors in your stores, etc. And remember, take short steps like Jill said. And remind somebody if they're coming into your store, well, you might want to slow down a little bit. Is there anything that we talk about that we can't do? It's just, just like you said, it's it's safety 101, isn't it? It's just, just a remind, reminder. And if you see somebody lifting wrong, take the time to say, hey, what about this way of doing things? Last thing, I get to go all over eastern Iowa to visit accounts, and Scott was right. He asked me to come up here, and he was right. You have very, a very, very impressive company. First class. 
you have those signs up there, and then something else that, that you do, you have your wellness center in something. Before I forget, I'm going to show you something, but I need this back. I just went to a training seminar, and the CEO of this company said, what's one big thing that, that they did that changed the whole company? And he said these little cards. And I got, I got some. And this is my last one. It's the name of the company right here. But on the other side, it says thank you. And on the bottom of it, it says pass it on to somebody. When they hire somebody, they give them, they give new employees a hundred of these. And they tell new employees, your job is if you see a customer doing something, you see a co-employee doing something, anybody, give somebody one. And I remember George said this is the best thing they ever did. And I took one, I took a stack of them, I gave one to somebody at work, and when I gave it to her, she was having a bad day, and she had a tear in her eye when I gave it to her. I said, I'm leaving. I said, I didn't want that reaction. <laughs> but that's what Lynn told me, thank you. And she goes, hey, that was awesome to do that. I said, hey, I just went to the seminar. I grabbed a stack of them, and this is what they do, which I thought was a great idea. Anybody have any questions, comments? Keep up the excellent work. You guys are really, really good at what you do. You are very, very <coughs> impressive. I don't get to go to companies like this very often. Hey, questions, you guys? This is where to ask. I'll go back to what I tell you all the time. I know one or two of these got to be sitting there with something up here. You're probably asking a question three or four people have. I got one. Knock, knock, knock. You're not here today. You, you can't get a hold of Sue. Sue's not here today. Steve just got here. So, and Joe's tied up with something. Knock, knock, knock. I'm Osha. I come walking in your door. What are you going to do? What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. First thing you're going to do is ask them if they have identification. Okay. And we have a policy on that. <laughs> Grab your book. Yeah. So just, just remember, <laughs> that can happen, right? You need to ask for a, you need to ask for a photo ID and you need to ask for a business card, and you need to ask the reason why they're there, and then you can, you can tell them to take a seat so you can call your management team. You don't want them walking around. And but then, you should also run your ship like bring it on. Yep. Because you should be in safety compliance every day. That's awesome that you say that. One of the best stories, I'm an OSHA trainer, and one of the best stories is somebody in the Twin Cities didn't ask and the management team was out at a seminar one day and nobody asked for anything and they dismantled a piece of equipment and the management team came back the next day and they said, what's new? Well, OSHA was here yesterday and they took our new machine. Yes. So they called the Minnesota OSHA office and they said, we don't know what you're talking about and we don't take equipment. And the machine cost $650,000 and they never found it. So that's why, like Joe, Joe said, ask. Ask questions. And like, like you just said, if you run a good ship like you do, you shouldn't be hiding anything anyway. Questions? And the and thing on that, you guys, with everything, we, we probably don't talk about it enough. If they got to pick on the little things, it's kind of like your health inspector, right? That's a compliment to you because they couldn't find the big things. And we can recognize the difference. So take care of the big things and the little things will fall into place. You guys know all that. Yep, be present in the moment. I hope everybody realizes how, how good a company you got. Is this just... This is a culture change that usually I'm going to somebody that needs help and you guys are doing all the such great things here. It's very, very impressive.
right, any questions, you guys? Mark, thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and kudos to our video recorder. Thank you.